dear old Whitefield, how it has changed since the settlers came and arranged to build two parallel circular roads and in between their sprawling abodes, colonial style bungalows set far apart, which history tells us was the start of Whitefield as it is known today, named after Mr. White, they say. Only the inner circle was originally the land that was given by the Maharaja. The rest of the, the, the development, people bought the land. So the original settlers, they decided to make the big Maidan in the center. And they settled around the sides. Then afterward, more and more people came and joined them. And the, the place was run by the Settlers Association. We came at a much later date, in springtime 1978. Whitefield hadn't grown that much, still had a distinctive rural touch, still exuding peace and calm, it hadn't lost its old-time charm. Only the main road was tarred in those days. Flocks of sheep and goats used to graze on very extensive vacant grounds, munching their way through their daily rounds. We came in 78, but we started developing the place in 79. Well, it didn't change much from the time when I was a child, so we thought we can do agriculture, then we realized there's no water anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so although we had a bow well, uh, but there wasn't enough to, to do any real proper farming, you know. It, so we were growing ragi and all that. It would be under, under rain fed, you know, depending on the rainfall. Because this is basically dry land. To make a telephone call was so difficult, it was quicker to go by bus. And not to say there were a lot of buses anyway, <laughs> because the tele they had an ancient telephone exchange in, a, in an old building, you see. And they don't think they had more than two or three lines going to Bangalore, going to Bangalore frank frankly. So if you wanted to make a call, it was very, very difficult. And uh, to build a house, you had to go to Bangalore for everything. You couldn't buy nails even here. Private cars were a rare sight still. Buses had to fit the bill battered, elusive specimen, no saying if they would come or when. In Shivaji Nagar it was no fun queuing for the 331. Queues were the order of the day, everywhere one encountered delay. The kerosene queue was a sight to behold. Kerosene was as precious as gold to those poor devils who cooked on the stuff. It was good really, but when we first came there were hardly any buses. Buses only came uh, three times a day or something like that. You never knew when they came. You had to queue for ages. No gas. Some people had gas, but we didn't have gas. We had to cook on kerosene. Endless queues for the kerosene. Yes, it was on ration. It was on ration. Such problems which everyone had to face made Whitefield an even friendlier place. We came to love it like everyone else. The faintly tinkling bullock cart bells of bullock carts columns passing at night in pitch black darkness without a light. They never ever disturbed our sleep. The traffic we now have can make one weep. Cycles and bullock carts then ruled the roads. Cycles transporting the strangest loads. And you've seen our club? That is rebuilt. It's the old club was a small place. And actually on paper, the Scepter's Association still owned that, that land. <laughs> that see, land was, was given by a lady. The Settlers Association came about because somebody had to run this place, isn't it? Yes. So, yes. Th so they amongst themselves chose a committee, yes. or I don't know how they did it, the president or whatever, and they, that was called the Settlers, uh, Residence and Settlers yeah, yeah. Association. I, I've got some old books. And it still exists, and it so happens my husband is still the president at the moment. At the moment, up to, up to, up to, up to next, Sunday. Next because Sunday, I'm because he's going to resign. <laughs> I miss the Ragi fields next door. I don't hear crickets anymore. The chorus of frogs is the thing of the past. I don't even know when I heard it last. I miss the beautiful butterflies, the kites wheeling high in the skies. Even the snakes seem to have fled. Where have they gone? Are they all dead? We roamed the countryside with no goal, hardly ever meeting a soul. Progress has put a stop to all that. The developers have grown very fat. The last 10 years saw the fastest change, the unimaginable range of high-rise blocks crowding the sky. Some are 13 stories high, supermarkets, tech parks, malls, VIP layouts behind high walls. Buildings are popping up everywhere, sadly without a plan or a care for poor Whitefield as a whole. No wonder it is losing its soul, 
The settlers who made the first small waves must be turning in their graves. Thank you.